Welcome in for what is installment number one of Assessing the Depth Chart for the DA Sports Blog. I'm Greg Medea. We will start with the quarterbacks and none other than senior Geno Smith. Green talents on display here tonight. Back to Geno Smith. He's looking for the seam. It's open in the middle again. It's Willie Milhouse. Second and 11. Smith takes a strike downfield and wide open was Stedman Bailey. A stiff arm for good measure and a sprint to the pylon. Touchdown, Mountaineers. 14 down there for Clemson trying to communicate the change in the secondary coverage. Smith, will he take off again? There he goes and he's in. Touchdown, West Virginia. Could the expectations be any higher for Smith? Coming off a season where he threw for 4,385 yards and 31 touchdowns, plus a record-setting Orange Bull victory. Smith is expected to outdo himself in year two of the Dana Holgerson system. And there's no reason to think why he can't do that. Smith showed up at Big 12 Media Day in Dallas looking physically bigger than he did six months ago. Smith even said he had put on about 25 pounds during the offseason. Add that weight, plus all the success he does studying in the film room and really getting to know the game. And it simply is a recipe for success. Then take a look at the other guys around the country that have played at least a couple of years under Dana Holgerson. While Holgerson was at Texas Tech in 2007, Graham Harrell threw for 5,705 yards, which was a 1,200-yard improvement from the year previous, 2006. And then at Houston, uh, coaching Case Keenum, he had about a 400-yard passing improvement. And plus that, both guys threw for 48 and 45 touchdowns respectively. So just by looking at numbers, history does show us what Smith, what's, what Geno Smith should be able to do. The bottom line is that Smith will make this team go, and the Mountaineers will ride on his shoulders this season. With all the accolades Smith has gotten during the preseason, being named preseason offensive player of the year in the Big 12, being named to the Davy O'Brien, Maxwell, Walter Camp, and Peyton Manning Award watch list, if Smith puts up the numbers and lead West, leads West Virginia to a successful first season in the Big 12, he will be a frontrunner for the Heisman Trophy. And now moving on to the backup quarterback, uh, Paul Millar. Millard showed to be anything but great during the little amount of playing time he had in 2011. Most people remember Millard uh, being yanked during the Orange Bowl after he threw an interception. Coach Holgerson then had to put Geno Smith back in the game after, after, the, after the Orange Bowl was well wrapped up. But remember, he was a true freshman and that there's still room for tons of progression. Millard showed that vast improvement during spring ball. Everyone that was around him, from Coach Jake Spavital to Coach Hogerson, even to Geno Smith, uh, said he was more confident in the way he's practicing and understood the offense better. And I think that comes with maturity uh, for Paul Millard. Uh, it seems like West Virginia has a very solid backup uh, in Paul Millard in case anything were to happen to Geno Smith, uh, God forbid. And lastly... Moving on to what some are tabbing as West Virginia's future is true freshman Ford Childress. Physically imposing at six foot five, two hundred twenty-five pounds, all you have to do is watch Childress throw the ball, and you can see that he has a ton of potential. The Houston native Childress was supposed to show his show that show that potential off during the annual Gold Blue game, but an April twentieth arrest for a D DUI put him on the sidelines, and maybe that doesn't happen going. Going into fall camp, we are probably talking about something else. We're probably talking about Childress competing with Paul Millard for the backup role instead of whether or not Ford Childress should redshirt during the 2012 season. And I think for the program's benefit, Childress should take that redshirt because he will probably never see the field in 2012 unless it's in a mop-up role and West Virginia's blowing out, say, a James Madison. Um, so other than that, it, it, it really isn't important for Childress to be on the active roster. I think I think it'll benefit the program more if WVU can get an extra year of eligibility out of Childress so that when Childress uh, develops and actually plays as a starter, uh, that year of eligibility becomes more valuable. So I think I think to have four Childress redshirt would be more beneficial to West Virginia and head coach Dana Holgerson. And with that, I conclude the quarterback edition of Assessing the Jeff Chart. Come back tomorrow to learn about the Mountaineer running backs. For the DA Sports Blog, I'm Greg Medea. Have a good day.